Thank you for joining us. Today I'm going to be developing a photograph very simply using a program known as the GIMP. You can download GIMP from GIMP.org for free and it's available for Mac, Windows, and Linux operating systems. Now developing a photograph digitally in a lot of ways is very similar to what you would do in an old darkroom. However, instead of dealing with harsh chemicals and confining yourself to a dark, dank basement or enclosed room, you have the ability to develop your photographs at your desk, in your living room, wherever you want to, that's comfortable for you. Now the length of time it takes to develop a photograph is entirely dependent on how detailed and how creative you wish to be. You can still spend hours on one single photograph or you could spend 10 minutes. The choice is entirely yours. What do you want the final outcome to be is the question you need to ask yourself. Now I'm going to show you three basic tools in GIMP to take a photograph through its basic, very basic process and steps. Now the photograph I've opened is taken of a, a fish in our aquarium. Uh, it's a discus, if, for those of you that like fish. And it, her name is actually Sun. Now, let's focus on the actual development. This is straight off the camera. I imported it using the software that came with the camera. Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to show you the histogram. The histogram is available under Colors, Info, and Histogram. Now for those of you that have been involved in photography for some time, you know what a histogram is. And this very simply is what it is. It's a balance of where your color values and lightness and, and dark and shadows and contrast all comes together in a nice little graph. Now for a properly balanced photo you want your histogram about right here in the center. That's where you want your nice little uh, wave to be. So we're going to close that and it's a well balanced photograph. It's not too sharp or crisp or clear but we're going to work on that throughout these, this process. The other thing I want to bring your attention to is layers. We will be using layers throughout this process. And the reason we use layers is because if we make a mistake we can easily go back. Also in the future there's a lot of different things you can do with layers to really enhance your darkroom experience so to speak. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to save this image as something other than the original file. And you want to do this right off the bat so that we can always have that original to go back to. So I'm going to just call this tutorial and we're going to save it. And you know what? We're going to say the extension is XCF. XCF is GIMP's default file format. It's very much like a PSD for those of you familiar with Photoshop. And the uh, technique I'm going to show you, if you're familiar enough with Photoshop, you can use in that application. What we're going to start with is we're going to go into Colors, and we're going to look at Levels. And again, here is our histogram. Okay. And before we start making changes, we're going to duplicate our layer, our background layer, by using this button. And we're going to make certain we have that selected. We're going to right click and we're going to choose Edit Layer Attributes. When we do that, it pops up a little box here that will allow us to change the layer name. We're going to just call this Levels and hit OK. Now that we have Levels selected, we're going to go back into Colors. We're going to open up those Levels and what we want to do is we want to move these sliders to where they're encompassing, for the most part, our image. You want to bring the right one in to where 
the curve is just starting and the left one ends where it's just ending. Now, while you're doing this, I'm going to move the layers out of the way, but don't worry, they won't be too far. Some of the things I'm moving off the screen here uh, is just to make it fit nicely in the video. But as we're moving these arrows, making these adjustments, we can see the differences it makes in the image. By bringing in our rightmost arrow, the image tends to get a little bit lighter. Moving in the leftmost arrow, it tends to get a little darker. Basically, you have your highlight tones over here on the right, your, your shadow or dark tones on the left, and in the middle is more or less your mid-tones. So, we're going to just try to fiddle with this until we get what we feel is a good, vibrant photo. And I believe we're there. Now this will actually change for every photograph. I've never come across two photographs that you could just plug in the numbers and say, boom, there it is, it's done. There is no cookie cutter operation. Uh, photography and the development of photography is not meant to be quick. If you truly want to be creative, you need to take the time. Now once we've adjusted our levels, we're going to hit OK. And so that's where we are right now. And remember, we still have our original layer here, the background. So if we want to see what it looked like before, we just remove that little eyeball. That was the original, and that's where we are now. But we're not done yet. We're going to add another, duplicate that levels layer. And you can rename it again by right-clicking on it, or you can double-click on the text there and we're going to call this Curves. Okay, now Curves is another critical step. Uh, let me move layers back out of the way for now. And we're going to go into Colors, and we're going to go into Curves. And we have kind of a nice little uh, line graph here. Now again, we're, we're think of levels as a rough tune-up on your photo to get the highlights and the mid-tones roughly where you want them. Curves allows you to fine-tune even in more detail. You have your, your darker or deeper shadowy areas and your contrast over here on the left, bottom left corner, and your highlights and your washed out areas or your brightness over here on the right hand side. Now typically what you want is a little bit of an S. And that usually will bring out the colors a little bit more. And where you have that S is entirely up to you and what you're shooting for. Okay, as you make adjustments, small adjustments make a big impact. Sometimes you just want to make a scene darker, sometimes you just want to make it lighter. You can really go crazy here with the various things that you are able to do. Now, for me, on this photograph, what looks good is not overdoing it. It's going to be a lot of little subtle changes You've got to play around until you get the effect you're looking for. Uh, the only right answer is when you're satisfied. Don't give up until then. Don't let somebody else dictate what good photography is to you. You're the person who took the photograph. You had a vision in mind when you did that. Now's the chance when you start to bring it to life. Now, let me reset and see. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, and you add little pivot points by just clicking on the line with the left mouse button. And then you just hold that down and drag it, and you can put it wherever you want. So, I honestly like 
this looked right here. So at the bottom of this color curves box is an OK button. We're going to go ahead and hit that. Now the final step to developing a photograph is to adjust the saturation. Here's also where you can make it black and white or you can really play with someone's minds and change the colors of everything. So we're going to go into colors again and what we're going to do is you see hue and saturation here. You can also adjust the color balance if something's not right there. You can colorize. Um, you have a lot of options here. I'm not going to go into all those options. Play with them as you wish. The biggest one I want to introduce you to is the hue and saturation. Occasionally, I just don't get the vibrant color that I'm looking for. So what I do is I go down into uh, hue and saturation under colors, and you can adjust the hue, which changes the colors completely around. I mean, it shifts them on the color wheel. You know, for those of you that remember uh, grade school, that little wheel that had all the colors, well, by sliding the hue, you're taking that wheel and spinning it around. Now, saturation is how how much power the colors have. You can really overdo it. It's easy to overdo it. Or you can turn your image black and white. Or somewhere in between. Lightness. Again, how bright the colors are. And like I said, you could really make a psychedelic looking fish there. Okay. For this photo, I really don't feel any adjustment on the saturation or hue is necessary. You can go in and change like only the green tones, only the blue tones. See, we can turn everything that's gray black and white. We can turn everything that's red black and white and you see what it did to our fish. So you got to be careful about that. Everything that's magenta you can turn to black and white. Everything that's dark blue it has a little bit of cyan in them but we can turn the dark blue black and white and you notice what's happening we're actually <laughs> turning our background into black and white little molted messes. Okay so I'm not going to make any changes to any of that. At the bottom of the area is a reset button. If you hit reset it takes it all back to the way it was. I'm going to hit cancel because we really didn't need the, saturate, the saturation. Now just to show you, this is what we had at the beginning and this is what we have now. And we have a good developed photograph. One that you can put on a postcard, you can add text, you can do a lot of things with this photograph. Well, I hope you found this little uh, tutorial enlightening and I hope it benefits you in some way, shape, and form. This is the beginning part of developing any photograph. Those three things, levels, curves, saturation. Those three things are to start to making a masterpiece in photography.